Hello everybody, welcome to Something to Talk About, and here I'm going to talk about Christopher Botley. That's right, from the Iron Islands. And uh, yeah, but before I do that, I have to say, hi everybody, welcome to Something to Talk About. My name is Taco, and we're in November now. We're at a year almost of me making these vids uh, on and off for a while, and then to a week for the last like half a year and it's been going man oh, i'm not burned out are you burned out i'm not burned out let's go we're going back to the iron islands okay i did a poll in like july of which a song by some fire characters from the iron islands do you want me to cover and it was like two characters from the king's moot which we'll get to and um baylor black tide and christopher botley and baylor black excuse me baylor black tide got number one and I'm just going to do, like, King's Moot Week soon. Don't worry about it. It's on the docket. I'm doing it. I'm just going to cover everyone from the King's Moot. So I'm like, let's squeeze in Trista for Botley. So I ended up doing, uh, this was the week of Halloween, and I needed somebody to just, like, squeeze in. It wasn't part of a theme because a Nimble Dick Crab and my, my top 13 scariest places were doing their own thing. So I could just, like, I just grabbed Trista for Botley, and I'm like, there he goes. So, um, yeah, welcome. And if you don't know what's going on and why I'm just yelling at the camera, you can hit pause, read all this. But, yeah, let's just go. We're talking about Christopher Botley, the Lord of Lords Port and Asha Simp. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, all right, we're starting with just good old Triss himself. Christopher Botley, known as Triss, is the second son of Lord Sawin. It's Sawin. Right? Sawain? <laughs> Sounds like Wayne's real life. Shawing! Sawain! <laughs> That's all I think of. Sawain Botley, the uh, uh, of Lord's Port. Uh, Triss is, uh, has a messy brown hair and large eyes. He was pimpled as a boy, aw, although he is now just a little cutie. Uh, Triss has an un unrequited love for Asha Greyjoy. That's literally important for just who he is as a character. Just pretty much his entire character. But let's talk about the house first. We always talk about the house for the second card. House Botley. House Botley. House Botley of Lord's Port is a noble house from the Iron Islands. One of the principal houses sworn to the Greyjoys. Their seat of Lord's Port is located on the island of Pike. At the opposite side of the Greyjoy's keep of Pike, their blazon is a shawl of silver fish on pale green. So yeah, there's the island of Pike in the Iron Islands, and on one side, that's where the Greyjoy's hang out. That's Pike, and then over here you got Lord's Port. So you arrive at Lord's Port, and you have to ride across the entire island to get over the Pike. Which I believe that's what Theon does in the like second book, right? That's fun. Lord's Port. So yeah, that's where they're that's where he's from. Good old Tristafa. Tristafa! <laughs> Can I squeeze in Sopranos references in my song about some fire pits? Tristafer was among five boys brought to Pike to become foster sons of Lady Alanis Harlaw, wife of Balon Greyjoy after the Greyjoy's Rebellion. Theon Greyjoy knew him since they were boys, so that's cool. Triss became friends with Asha Greyjoy, but was sent away to Black Tide after he and Asha were found touching each other by Maester Quellen. Um, so Triss was in love with Asha, but Asha looks back on him fondly but blames most of their actions on her becoming a woman, like she just went through puberty, she just became a lady. Um, he was there, her own age, and willing. Nothing more. So this is literally very important for Trisfer. We're going to talk about her, and him and Asha the entire time. It's like the majority of his character. So it was like young love for him. And she just, like, kind of getting all these weird puberty feelings and, you know, and, and her body's changing and her mind is changing and her desires are changing. And he's there. He's pimply, but so is she. And it, she's like, all right, man, you want to you wanna make out and touch? And he's like, yeah, I love you. She's like, yeah, bup, 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 bup. And then after their maester found out, they, he sent him away. 
So yeah. Um, so uh, da -da 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 -da. though she liked him in the beginning, she became bored with him before he was sent away. So even before the maester found out, she was already kind of over him. Triss wrote letters to Asha from Black Tide, but Maester uh, Joserin refused to send them. And there, there's more. He like, I gave him to, I gave some letters to a blah 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 traitor. Did you get him? And she's like, no. And he's like, they must have blocked yours too. She's like, I didn't send any letters, boy. <laughs> we'll get to their conversation soon. But yeah, so that's what's important. So he was sent to Black Tide. We're I already covered Baylor Black Tide from Black Tide. Go check that out if you're curious about Black Tide. Um, so anyways, uh, he was sent to Foster there because, yeah, because the maester and whoever was like, no, we got to separate them. But he looks back at it like that was true love. And she looks back at it like that was just teenagers fumbling. That ain't much. That wasn't much. The Lord of Botley. Lord Botley. Trissy. I only call him Trissy once, sorry. Trissy becomes the legitimate Lord of House Botley when his father, Swain, is drowned by Euron Greyjoy for refuting his claim to the throne. Wow. And his elder brother, Heron, dies at Mount Kaelin, shot by a poison arrow by a bog devil. That's just a chronic man, right? Okay. Um... He is the only Lord Bot he's only Lord Botley in name for his titles and land have been given to Christopher's uncle who supported Euron. So he's still Lord Botley, but he ain't Lord Botley. He doesn't have any power. He's probably not even allowed to say Lord Botley. The other guy's being called Lord Botley because when Euron Greyjoy showed up after uh, um, Balin Greyjoy died, Balin, Balin, Balin Greyjoy died, um, Euron's like, I'm king. And they're like, no, you're not. And he goes, oh, sorry, what was that? Swain, what was that? I'm going to drown you. And then after his brother's like, you're king, dude. And he's like, thank you, Swain's brother. Probably Garth. Swain and Garth. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> Make dumb jokes here, okay? Just deal with it. So, um, so yeah, I don't know who Swain's brother is. But he's now the Lord. And then Christopher had to run away. Run away. Yay! Did I cover every? Yeah, I covered all that. So that's what's going on now. His house is like, all of his lands are taken, and then he flees. He flees to Harlaw. So re reunion at Ten Towers. Christopher meets with Lord Roderick Harlaw, Roderick the Reader. I also covered Roderick the Reader. Check it out. So the only two, <laughs> the only two Iron Islanders I've covered before now, I think. Yeah. And then I'm going to do my King's movie. Um, I have others planned too. Calm down. Um, yeah, so he meets up with Roderick the Reader, where Roderick the Reader has been gathering supporters for Asha. Asha arrives and speaks to Roderick before running into Triss. <coughs> Excuse me. She looks back on their time or on her time with him and tells her about or and he tells her about the letters he tried to get to her from Black Tide. She tells, or he tells her of Euron's actions and the men he is gathering on Pike. She asks for his voice at the King's Moot. He then offers himself entirely and asks for her hand in marriage, claiming he has already gotten consent from her mother. So pretty much everything I already covered gets covered in this conversation, like her thoughts towards him. So he shows up, she in her monologue tells us all of their past, and then he... He's like, I tried to get letters for you. And he's, she's like, yeah, cool, whatever. I got a king's mood to do. Will you give me your voice? He's like, I'll give you everything. You can have it all. And she's like, I just want your voice, creeper. <laughs> so, so he immediately throws himself at her like, let's get married. And she's like, no. Oh, man. All right. Um, so uh, claim, yeah, so he already got consent from his, her mom. Um so he claims that he has only dreamt of her and that he has never touched another woman. She fires back, go touch one then, and tells him how she has touched many men with her body and her axe. So yeah, he's like, I've never touched any woman. And she's like, go touch one. I touch guys all the time, both with like bits of my body and axes. Dude, I kill people and I bang people. 
go do one. Go, go do one of those things. Uh, so, yeah, she, um, like I said, completely shuts him down. And he is like, waited his whole life. Like, I've loved you so much. And she's like, Christopher, right? We made out? Weird. <laughs> she doesn't say that, but it's pretty close. Um, go touch one then. I love that. All right. Um, so uh, she shuts him down and tries to walk away from the lovesick puppy. That's what she thinks of him. Uh, that's her inner monologue, lovesick puppy. He grabs her arm. Ooh. And then she puts a knife to his throat, slightly cutting him. She dismiss dismisses him once again, like, dude, I don't love you. Leave me alone. And he then lets her go. So it gets physical where he's like, hey, I've always loved you. And she's like, cool, cold shoulder. And he's like, hey. And she's like, get like, knife to the throat. Like, get off me, boy. Like, I'm your queen. I am not your lover. Back off. And that's essentially what she says to him. Like, you can, you can have me as a queen, but you will not have me as a wife. Back off. And he kind of does. So let's get to the queen's moot. Not the king's moot. The queen's moot. So, yeah. Queen the moot. Aaron Damper leads the ceremonial council at the ruined bones of the Grey King's Hall on Naga's Hill. Commoners crowd together at uh, the Knoll's base. All right. With... Thralls, women, and uh, children behind them. Gilbert Farwind, Lord of the Lonely Light, comes first as a candidate. I'm not going to cover any of these guys. I'm just saying their names because I love them. I will cover all of them in my King's Moot Week. Don't worry about it. All right. So Gilbert Farwind goes first, followed by Eric the Iron Maker and Dustin Drum. The first Greyjoy to talk is Victoria and Greyjoy with Newt the Barber and Wrath the Limper and Red Wrath Stonehouse as his champions. Great names, guys. He is well-received in his, of his gifts of gold and silver and gems at, uh, aid to his supporters, add to his supporters. So Victorian's the first one. Victorian King! God, I love the King's Mood. I love the King's Mood, guys. All right. So everyone's like, yeah. And then she goes, <laughs> Nuncle. And then Asha talks. Asha Greyjoy comes next with Carl the Maid and Christopher Bobley and Sir Harris Harla as her champions. She does better than anyone expected, but ultimately loses to Euron and she flees the Isles. So yeah, then Euron shows up and... Yeah, pulls his Euron Greyjoy stuff. I'm not covering the King's Mood here. I'll cover it later. Um, but yeah, so Euron Greyjoy wins the King's Mood, and she has to, like, run away, run away, baby shark. Okay, sorry. I have a daughter. I'm a three-year-old daughter. All right. Flee the islands to Deepwood. After Euron is proclaimed king of the Isles and the North at the King's Mood, Chris Christopher, I'm going to say Christopher. That's the first time I'm said Christopher. I'm doing good. Christopher, Christopher sails on his uh, long ship to Deepwood Mott with three others, uh, three other of Asha's long ships, as she contemplates her next move. <clears throat> Deepwood is the seat of House Glover in the north, and it is a wooden moat, Mott, Mott, and Bailey Castle. Asha still holds it since she captured it. When they invaded the north, he grows so good old Triss grows a thick brown beard. God, I miss my beard. All right, uh, wears furs and rides a tall Rowan stallion. One night after she sleeps with Carl the maid, yeah, it's a pretty, it's it's it's, it's a good chapter, guys. Asha <laughs> runs. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm not like <laughs> there, there's a sex scene in this chapter. There is. Um, but yeah, this chapter is really good because you're going to get the most of Christopher next to that last one. It's, it's like these two chapters is where you get the most Christopher Bobby. So, um, yeah, so she just sleeps with Carl the maid and Asha runs into Triss while eating cheese. I'm not making that up. She's just in the kitchen getting some post-coital cheese. Post-coital cheese should be the name of my band. All right. Uh, hey, they argue <laughs> over their next move, but she just suggests he sleeps with Hagen's daughter, but he refuses. 
He tells her it's time to go before the Northmen kill them. She tells him that she can't run. He suggests that they run to the east and become traitors, becoming rich of spices. Whew, sorry, I'm yawned. She turns him down, suggesting they take Sea Dragon Point and carve out a small kingdom. He shuts that down, uh, too, though Triss earns a kiss after he tells her of Torgon the Latecomer. So when she learns about Torgon the Latecomer, she's like, oh, and she gets an idea. Well, that idea don't mean anything because something immediately happens. The battle at Deepwood. Their conversation gets interrupted by a horn. Uh, the horn signify the killing of Northmen scouts. Uh, when Northern Mountain Clansmen approach Deepwood, Asha abandons the castle and uh, leads the Ironborn toward the Bay of Ice. Traveling in the Wolveswood, they are defeated in a fight by Deepwood Mott by Stannis Baratheon's Met. Despite not being a warrior, Tristopher fights bravely in the battle. Uh, yeah, he does. Uh, well, Asha is taken by Stannis uh, for his march on Winterfell, Triss and the other Ironborn survivors are imprisoned at Deepwood Mott. Asha's four longships are captured and burned by Alysanne Mormont. I just covered Alysanne Mormont. Go watch that video, guys. Alysanne. Awesome. All right. Um, off to the crofters village. So this is the end of the books and then a little bit in the winds of winter. So, um, yeah. So the ironborn along with Triss at Deepwood are eventually ransomed by lady Sibe uh, Sybil Glover by Tycho Nestoris, who I also just covered. <laughs> Tycho is an envoy of the Iron Bank of Bravos and is looking for Stannis. They escort Tycho to Stannis, whose army is encamped, encamped? Yeah, all right. At the Croster, Crofter's Village just outside of Winterfell. So, yeah, that's like kind of how the books, like not the last chapter, but one of them. So they're all at the Crofter's Village and a bunch of riders show up and it, Clayton Suggs thinks it's like Clayton Suggs is like messing with Asha, and then all of a sudden, oh, I cover Clayton Suggs too. And then all of a sudden, some horses come up, and he's like, Go tell them it's Stan or it's Bolton's, and it's not Bolton's, it's Tycho freaking Nestoris with a bunch of um, with a bunch of hostages, one of them being Christopher Botley. All right, the winds of winter. Okay, so when I cover winds, I always state. The books aren't out yet. This might change. This is just from sample chapters and previews and whatever. So we don't always know exactly if this is accurate or not. So I'm putting an asterisk right there. So Christopher and Carl the Maid accompany Asha to her meeting with Stannis Baratheon when she asks about the fate of her captive brother, Theon Greyjoy. Theon Greyjoy considers Triss and Carl to be Asha's pets. He's not really wrong. <laughs> all right, there you guys go. Literally all the way until to the book that's not even out yet. So that's Christopher Botley's story. He's still alive. We get to cover more. I like, hopefully we get to see more Christopher Botley and I, I hope he has a good, good run, right? I'll be last. So let's get into <laughs> Triss the Simp. So uh, I always cover fan theories or other stuff for this guy or for, for the characters if there's some symbolism or whatever. But I didn't really find that. This is what I found. So um, I couldn't find any real theories about Triss. If you have some crazy tinfoil, let me know in the comments. I found a few Reddit posts discussing if he's a good dude or not. Max of the Magic Friends on Westeros.org had a cool post really giving Triss a ton of credit for being a good guy. Unlike the rest of the vicious killer Ironborns, he is a loyal, dependable, sensible, respectful, and many other nice words. Um, yeah, so one of the guys who I, I read a post on, on Westeros.org really was like, guys, you guys are too mean to Triss at first. He's really awesome, dude. And then I found one from from a deleted name, but yeah. Uh, then I, there is a Reddit post from a deleted user, I don't know who did it, uh, that claims Christopher does not deserve our sympathy. So 
that prompted me to ask my YouTube channel what they thought of him. So here are the results. You already see the results. They're up on the same thing. But we'll get to actually what the results mean afterwards. But yeah, so a lot of it was, is he this like toxic, like, I'm really nice to her. She deserves or like I deserve her love or I, you know, I earn her love because I'm nice to her, like kind of toxic dude. Or is he just the sweetheart? So I don't know. So let's cover what the definition of a simp is before we look at the results. You already see the results, but we'll talk about them in a second. Also, so the definition of a simp, according to dictionary.com, simp is a slang insult for men who are seen as too attentive and submissive to women, especially out of failed hope of winning some entitled uh, sexual attention or activity from them. So that idea is I'm going to do everything you ask and that earns me sexual attention, which is not okay, right? <laughs> like, no, nothing earns you that. Not, you never deserve sexual attention. I, you guys don't need to hear this, but you know what I'm saying is, is you, you do because you're a great guy, and if, if the girl likes you and you like them, then magic happens. But you don't go, well, I take her. I, I, I bought her lunch four days in a row. How come I don't get any? Because you creep her out for some reason. All right, so I had to ask, the YouTube, uh, my my channel, is he a simp? Is he a sweetheart? Or is he actually Asha's true love? And 65% think that he's just a simp. <laughs> uh, I'm surprised that 12 people thought he was Asha's true love. You guys are beautiful. If any of you guys think that, like, no, Asha and Trisper will, will get together at the end. Trust me. Tell me in the comments. Or is he just a sweetheart? He's not a bad, like, I don't think of him as a bad dude. And it, like maybe a little on that toxic side, but he's never really, besides the time when he grabbed her arm, never mind. Him grabbing her arm was a little like, dude, back off. Right. But I I do think that he he is a nice guy, except for kind of that weird questionable stuff. Maybe I don't think he's a nice guy. Maybe I'm putting myself put myself in a, a bad spot here. <laughs> but yeah, what do you think of Christopher Botley? Do you think my YouTube poll was right? Is he just a weird toxic simp? He might be, but there you guys go. This is Christopher Botley. Welcome to November. And uh, I'm excited. Uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling good. And uh, the, the channel's doing fun stuff. I'm getting a lot more putting out vids. People are watching them. And if you guys are new to the channel, thank you. And um, yeah, click like, subscribe, do all that awesome YouTube stuff. So until then, uh, peace. I got nothing.